British poet Robert Henry Forster wrote a poem about winter aconite, scientifically, Aranthus hyamalis. Here is some of that poem. Tis the first blossom that the year hath seen, this little globe of yellow's brightest shade, as though upon a nest of scanty green, a fairy bird its magic egg had laid. Almost the smallest flower the garden grows, and yet a flower when not another blows. Well, that dude was British. So, winter aconite, coming up so early as to be considered by some to not be an early spring flower, but actually a late winter flower. Is this little thing native to the United States? Non-native or a reprehensible invasive? Non-native. This one is a little tricky, I admit. The non-native status is for sure. Very high confidence interval there. Some say that it's strictly a non-native. Other sources indicate that it's a non-native that could almost be considered invasive and how quickly it can form really big mats if it's happy. Right on the edge of invasive, right on the edge of out of control. Many other sources consider it a non-native that is naturalized, though. Um, okay, so naturalized. What the hell does that mean? Well, naturalized merely means that you have a non-native plant that can spread all by itself through seeds and it can attract some native pollinators and it sort of integrates into the environment where it has been brought. It's not as nasty as an uncontrollable invasive, but it doesn't require humans to spread on its own. Take a moment to note here. Because pollinators visit a flower does not necessarily mean that it's healthy for them. In fact, we have good data and evidence that many non-native flowers that pollinators will visit are actually detrimental to their health. Flowers that have evolved with certain pollinators together have pollen and nectar in the correct ratios for those pollinators and with the carbohydrate to fat to protein ratio that is also correct for those pollinators. So a naturalized plant may well attract some pollinators and be able to make seeds and spread, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for those pollinators. What's really nice about native plants is that you know beyond a doubt that the pollen to nectar ratio and the ratio of carbohydrates to proteins to fats in that pollen and nectar is just right for our native pollinators. Okay, so winter aconite is non-native, perhaps naturalized, perhaps invasive, but certainly definitely not native. All right, where is winter aconite from? How did it get here? And ooh, girl, I have a perfect few native flowers to replace your non-native winter aconite with. Such good replacements. Winter aconite is native to southern France, Italy, the Balkans area, Bulgaria, Albania, all the way to Asia Minor, which is mostly just Turkey today. So this line here is where winter aconite is from. But since the late 1500s, it has been grown in Europe and England, where it has been naturalized. There is that word again. <laughs> in my own words, naturalized just means that without human help anymore, it can spread and live in an area and pollinators will visit it regardless of whether or not it's truly healthy for those pollinators. All right. Late 1500s, from 1596 to 1599, we've got it noted as being in John Gerard's garden in Britain, as well as John Gerard described and wrote about it um, in this book of his, The Herbal or General History of Plants, from 1597. In fact, in this book, he says about winter aconite, Yea, the colder the weather is, the deeper that the snow is, the fairer and larger is the flower. And the warmer the weather is, the lesser is the flower. Alrighty, so let's jump ahead 100 years. In the United States, it's been cultivated since the 1700s. There's one citation of a Philadelphia plant guy, Bernard McMahon, putting it in his uh, catalog of tuberous rooted flowering plants in 1806. So how precisely it got here, I really couldn't find. 
I could only find that it was first noted or written about as being here in the United States since the 1700s. It seems like it was never as prized as tulips or daffodils by rich people, but it has long been an interesting ornamental plant. Did you know that every part of winter aconite is highly toxic? The roots, the stem, the flower, the leaves, whole deal. It is considered one of the top 10 most poisonous plants. Hmm. All right. So let's say you've decided to rip up your winter aconite because it's non-native and it's poisonous. And so you're a real sucker if you keep it. (laughs) Uh, What are some native flowers that come up early, are yellow, are short, and really resemble winter aconite? Easy. This one is really easy. I have three options for you. Kind of six, depending on how you look at it, but really three. And these are really similar to winter aconite. Uh, All the native plants that I'll talk about here uh, will be listed in the video description. Okay, our first little group is the buttercups, which bear quite a resemblance to winter aconite. Which buttercup you'd pick depends on whether your soil is really dry, medium dry, or medium wet. So, the first up is the prairie buttercup, Ranunculus rhomboideus. Six inches tall, comes up in April or May, and this is your choice if you have dry or medium dry soil. It could easily be mistaken for winter aconite, right? Okay, but your soil isn't dry, it's more like medium. Maybe a little medium dry, but medium. Well then, early buttercup is your choice, Ranunculus fascicularis, nine inches tall, comes up in April or May. Again, super similar to winter aconite. Am I right? Fine, fine, fine. Your soil is more like medium wet or wet. Well, then I've got swamp buttercup for you, Ranunculus septentrionalis, nine inches tall, coming up in April or May. I mean, geez, these three buttercups are so damn similar to each other and to winter aconite. Rip out the aconite, put one of these in. All right, so that's the buttercups. That's option one. Here next are the violets. There are two violets that you might like as well. Both are short, they're yellow, they come up early, and they're a slight tick different looking from the aconite, just a little different. Uh, And just like with the buttercups, you would pick between these two violets based on soil moisture. So the first is the yellow prairie violet, Viola nutali, four inches tall, comes up in April or May, medium dry to dry soil. If your soil is more like medium to medium wet, then the smooth yellow violet is what you want. Six inches tall, comes up in April or May. So you've got those two basic choices, your buttercups or your violets, and you'd pick between them based on your soil moisture. I do have one more though that I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you about. Some people like winter aconite because it's yellow, short, comes up early, and because it can spread relatively easy to make a decent ground cover. So if that is what you're more interested in, I give you this. Prairie sundrop, or meadow evening primrose, Anothera pelosula, comes up in May or June, so not quite as early as the others, and it's two feet tall, so a little taller. It can handle soil moisture all the way from medium dry to medium wet, so that's nice, but it can spread semi-aggressively, which is why it can be a little like winter aconite in that way, if that's what you like. The roots are really shallow, so you can rip this one up easily if it's overtaking too much. It's not hard to keep it in line. So perhaps now you're thinking about replacing that winter aconite or growing something else that's native along with it. You smart son of a gun. So be sure when you look up these native flowers to purchase that you look them up by their scientific name, all of which I have for you in the video description, because the common names often get mixed up all around and confused between different people and different companies. The scientific name will keep you on the straight and narrow with what you're getting. Also, not all plant companies are the same. 
I don't get any money to wax on about these companies, but Prairie Nursery and Prairie Moon Nursery are two native plant companies that I trust to buy native plants from. You'll get the right thing. It'll be in good shape. It won't be a hybrid or something else nefarious. Uh, Similar names, two different native plant nurseries, uh, and they're really great. So there you have it. Winter Aconite. Non-native, maybe a little invasive, maybe naturalized, which might not even be helpful for our pollinators. So be bold, be brave, rip that garbage out, put in one of these incredibly similar, but way better yellow buttercups or yellow violets instead. Plant native, my friends.